I'm Simone Davis and welcome back to another episode of Jar Journeys. Now many of you are asking what am I going to do this week after jumping out of a plane? Well, I'm trying to chill out and keep my feet planted on the ground, okay? Throw month is over, we are in the month of August, so we're going back to the way we normally do things where I have three jars and I pick an activity a place and a price and find something that falls in line with all three. So to save time, I already picked them out. So here's what we're gonna do. We have to go to Newport News. We have to find a park that is free of cost. And I think I have a place in mind. I went a few years back and I think it's time we revisit this location. So I'll see you guys out there. Hey guys, I'm in Newport News in front of the Victory Arch and I have the city historian, Mary Kaya Seljuk. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Did I get it right? You did. Oh, yeah. Okay. So tell me about this arch. A lot of history here. There is a lot of history here. This arch is the symbol of Newport News. It was built in early 1919 as a way of city recognizing the returning troops from World War I. This arch was uh, significant because unlike the others, it remained, it was permanent. Newport News originally intended to only um, have a temporary arch, but it ended up uh, lasting and then being rebuilt in stone. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. Can you describe the detail in the architecture? The arch was modeled after the one in Paris, the Arc de Clion. It's much smaller in size though, although uh, it's impressive on the uh, site where it's located. It's uh, 50 feet high, uh, has an 18 uh, foot wide span, and as I said, it has several um, classical moldings on it, but it's nowhere near as fancy as the um, Arc de Triomphe. Four triumphal plaques on the arch. Uh, there, was, there were two that were in place just as soon as it was uh, built and dedicated. One that had the facts about um, who built the arch and the other one that listed the names of the 32 servicemen from the peninsula. Oh, I see a John Davis Edwards, but I don't think we're related. Additional plaques have been added over the years um, that commemorate uh, peninsula service persons from um, all our major wars, World War I, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. The Eternal Flame was added by uh, Braxton Perkins Post 25, an American Legion post that was very active in the community, uh, again, to bring additional um, symbolism to the arch. And it's a nice location because you can get a bit of history and you can also take a stroll. There's a Victory Landing Park that's right behind it. Correct, Victory Landing Park um, was Originally part of that port of embarkation, it's been opened up to the public now. Uh, there are interpretive panels, uh, planting, seatings, waterfront access, and so it's a beautiful park within the city to enjoy by all citizens. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. If I lived in Newport News, I would eat lunch out there every single day. It is absolutely stunning. Oh, and can you imagine going at night watching the sunset? I'm telling you. If you haven't been, check it out. Let me know if you do. For more information on Victory Arch and Victory Landing Park, head over to wavy.com, click on that Living Local tab. Until next time, I'm Simone Davis. See ya.